Hello and welcome to this webcast. I'm Fiona Godley, editor of the BMJ. This is a collaboration between the Campaign for Greener Healthcare, the Climate and Health Council, the NHS Sustainable Development Unit and BT. We're here to discuss the film The Age of Stupid because a license to view the film is being made available today for everyone working in the NHS in England. Before I introduce the panel, let me remind viewers that you can ask a question at any time during the webcast by pressing the Ask a Question button on the website. And so to our panel. First, we have Franny Armstrong, director of The Age of Stupid. Franny has directed three cinema release documentaries which have been seen together by 55 million people worldwide. Then we have Professor Hugh Montgomery, Professor of Intensive Care Medicine at UCL and co-author of the recent UCL Lancet Commission on Health Impacts of Climate Change. Next we have David Colin Tome, a former GP and now National Director of Primary Care in the Department of Health, Dr Angela Raffle, a consultant in public health in Bristol, and Chris Tuppen, Chief Sustainability Officer for BT Group. Franny, let me begin by asking you what in your mind sets this climate change film <laughs> apart from others that people may have seen? Yeah, we do get this question quite a lot, I have to admit, and people say, you know, we've already got Inconvenient Truth, why would we want another climate change documentary? And uh, I think, you know, it's kind of like asking Francis Ford Coppola, not that I'm uh, <laughs> comparing myself to him, like, why would we need another film about war? What's the point of making an apocalypse now? Or, you know, we've got Brief Encounter, why would we want another film about love? And of course, you know, war and love are small topics compared to climate change uh, and you know how, how much it's going to affect all of our futures. And so we need lots of films about climate change, every aspect of climate change. And uh, so I think Inconvenient Truth was a fantastic film and it basically did the science, it covered the science. And then uh, it, it actually came out halfway through when we were producing our film and uh, so we went to see it. We were a little bit worried, I have to admit, and we went to see it and then we were like, great, they've done the science. And we could actually take out, we used to have a five minute section on the science in our film, we cut it out after Inconvenient Truth because our film is the human side, you know, the human cost and the human implications. So. And it really does hit to those human emotions and that was your aim when you made it? Well, absolutely. I mean, we want to inspire change. You know, obviously we've only got a very short time, just a few months left really to tackle this problem before Copenhagen, the big climate summit. Um, and so we really wanted to just, our basic message is emergency, emergency. We have to act now. And uh, we, but we decided to do that in, in order to get as mainstream as we possibly could to make it a mainstream kind of film. You know, it's got an orchestral score. It's got a Hollywood actor. It's got funny animation. It's even got jokes in it. And let me tell you, the getting I a laugh admit, out I of the jokes. <laughs> it has some laughs, it has some laughs, and it's, it's quite hard to get a laugh on climate change. So, yeah, we made it as mainstream as we possibly could. And we are five months pretty well to the day to the Copenhagen summit. Yep. So, time is short, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, basically, the only chance we have of uh, stopping runaway climate change is to massively cut global emissions. The only way of cutting emissions globally is a binding international treaty. And the last chance to get a binding international treaty within the timescale of the physics of the planet is at Copenhagen this December when the UN comes together, all the world's leaders come together to, uh, to make the new treaty, which is the successor to the Kyoto Treaty. And the really scary thing is that the best treaty that's currently on the table, obviously they don't make it at Copenhagen, they're working on it for years. The best treaty currently on the table is the EU kind of UK position. If that got accepted, which is a massive if, and then if those emission cuts got uh, made throughout the uh, rich world, that would give us about a 50-50 chance of not hitting two degrees and then not triggering runaway climate change and not, you know, creating the greatest humanitarian catastrophe ever known and hundreds of millions of people dying. Our elected leaders are giving 50-50 at best. Where is the public outcry? 